This is the New American Media. All right, everybody, welcome back. If you're listening live, that took just a matter of seconds. If you're listening after the fact, welcome, hello, howdy. My name is Brian Engelin. This is the Unhappy Hour. We are joined with special guest Zach Barris. You can follow him on Twitter. He's at Z Barris, lifelong Cleveland sports fan and NBA scout. And please make sure you check out our homepage, thenewamericanmedia.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash thenewamericanmedia. Make sure you're following us on Twitter at American underscore media underscore. And do a quick search on uh, Facebook, the new American media with spaces in between, and like our page, Zach. I wanted to pick up with this. Um, one of one of our buddies named Damien, big basketball fan. He was asking. He said, "Make sure you ask Zach about Rondo." And this was a couple of days ago. I think he was looking for a heads up if Rondo was going to get dealt. Um, any any thoughts? I'll start with that, and then we'll go around the league with the deals that did happen. Any reason why they're holding on to Rondo still? Yeah, because he won't sign an extension anywhere he goes right now. And it's not like they were trying to trade him to you know, favorable markets that would send him to the New Yorks of the world or Miami or even Dallas or places like that. I don't blame him for telling him Sacramento he's not going to sign an extension there. Why would he? They're, they're a perennial losing team. They stink. They have no veteran leadership. And that might be why he said no there. I, I mean, the Toronto thing... I don't know why I said that. I, I don't know why I said no to Toronto. They're a decent basketball team. I mean, maybe Rondo's looking to play for an actual contender. You know, I think though he would make Toronto a much better basketball team. And and so now he's he's just riding it out with the Celtics, hanging out. Uh, let's let's talk about some of the trades that did happen then. You know, because this time of year everybody becomes GM. It's kind of fun. Oh, everybody knows the way to improve their their team. Shocking! It, most of the the, the the purported trades and rumors don't really come to fruition. But let's talk about some of the ones that did happen, Zach. Okay, I want to start with the one that was the biggest shakeup in the NBA, and that was Danny Granger for for Evan Turner. Right. Uh, I think that Indiana only Indiana was a very good team. They are now loaded. They are loaded getting Evan Turner. Especially, I mean, you look how Evan Turner played earlier in the year when Philly was actually winning games and looked like it looked like a ball club that could actually, you know, that wasn't a D League team that could get within 30 points of any team. And not only were they playing competitive bets, but they were beating the likes of Miami. They were beating some really good teams. Right. And now they just look like they've come back down to earth. And this is exactly what everybody predicted Philly, Philly would be doing during the season. I didn't honestly believe they would win 10 games this year. I thought they were that bad. But they, they held on to their players long enough. I don't know if they will win another game this year, truthfully. I really don't know. Trading Spencer Hawes away, if Danny Granger, if they buy him out, I don't know if they will win another game. Yeah, it's total tank mode. I mean, Evan Turner's a hell of a player. I mean, why'd they let him go for that? And by the way, the the the, the deal that Damien was mentioning was, uh, what are the chances Rondo goes to Indiana? That was specifically what he was asking, and that kind of ties in. With uh, this I one. didn't even I didn't even hear about Rondo going to Indiana. I didn't hear him. I didn't hear any Rondo for 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 Granger or for Lance Stevenson. I did not hear any of that. And okay. if I didn't hear it, I'm not saying it's not true, but doubtful. I, I did not. I haven't heard anything about Rondo going to the Pacers. Well, then, then Evan Turner is a hell of a player. Why did the he Sixers? Is. It's a great. It's a great fit for Indy. They, they didn't need Granger and Paul George in the same lineup. Granger is no longer a fit there. Uh, you know, Philadelphia. I mean, Indiana still lacked a true point guard. Stevenson's more of a two guard. George Hill's more of a two guard. They really don't have a true point guard on the roster, but Evan Turner is definitely a big addition to that ball club. I mean, they're, that's a team that's loaded up with depth. They've got Skull on the bench. They've got Bynum. They now have George Hill or Evan Turner, whoever start, whoever doesn't start. I mean, you have probably the best bench in one of the top three benches in the NBA, if not the best, as long as, long as they're healthy. And their starting lineup is deadly, too. I mean, Miami's going to have a challenge with them because – not only is Indiana better than they were two years ago, they're better than they were last year when they almost beat them. And I think this year they're – I mean, Paul George is a better player. Granted, LeBron, LeBron's LeBron. Right. And when he goes off, he's, you can't stop him. And he'd probably but, say the same thing about himself, speaking about himself in the third person. LeBron's LeBron. Anyway. Yeah, and like I said, I, I still think it's a total crapshoot in the East who wins. I'm not going to – 
I wouldn't tell you right now. I'm not willing to put a dime on Indiana or Miami. I'm winning the East this year. I'm not. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if either team wins in seven. I'm, oh, the 76ers wave Daryl Clark. I, I wouldn't be surprised at all with who wins. I, I, if Miami were to win that in seven, in seven I'm not going to sit there surprised. If Indy were going to sit there and win in six or seven, I'm going to sit there and say, okay, not surprised by this one bit. Indiana's a great basketball team. But I can tell you whatever team comes out of the East is probably winning the title as long as it's Miami or Indy. Really? Whatever team comes out of the East is probably winning the title. There are some strong teams in the West. I, I just – I think Miami or Indy is going to win it this year. I, 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 that's what I believe. I mean, although Oklahoma City is damn good, I think Durant's fantastic. He's having, he's having a historic season. He really is. And getting Westbrook back now, you've shown that Reggie Jackson is actually a decent NBA player. He's been playing really well too. I mean, Oklahoma City seems like they might have it too. I mean – but I, I tend to think it'll be Indiana or Miami will be the champion this season. Well, they they definitely made the biggest splash. Uh, the Pacers really up in their ante. What 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 was Miami doing? They they waived a player to add a roster space. Who did they? Yeah, fill now it up? you have that all available because all these players are getting waived. Yet. Guys like Danny Granger might get cut. Guys like Earl Clark. There's going to be plenty of guys bought out around the league, and there's going you know guys like Ben Gordon. There's plenty of talent now floating around the NBA to go and sign one. That's why Miami did it. But they don't have a lot of money. They don't have no, a lot of money left. Matter. Those guys are all getting paid anyways. You can sign them at the veteran minimums. They, they're already being paid by their old team. When a guy gets bought out, they're being paid by their original team. So you can go and sign them for the veteran minimum. And that's the game plan that the Heat are rocking right now. Yeah, and it's a very smart game plan too. Now you can go and say to yourself, okay, we're, we don't really have a center on the roster. Let's go out. I'm just saying, this is just for example, let's go out and, you know, we'll go sign a center. We'll sign the best available center in the market. You know, guy, maybe we'll go out and sign B.J. Mullins, or we're going to go out there and we're going to sign Ben Gordon. We need a guy who can score off the bench. I'm not saying they're going to sign Ben Gordon. I'm just giving examples. Or maybe you know, Miami will say, listen, let's go like, like the hell with it. Let's go out and sign Danny Granger. We're going to go, we're going to understand Indy's defensive scheme. We're going to be able to get under their skin. We're going to take, the, we're going to take a player who's been with them his whole career Fans love them. It's going to be hard for Indy to root against them. It'll quiet the crowd down. <laughs> Let's go out and find Danny Granger for a bench scoring. It can help. Okay. <laughs> uh, so who do you think that they have their eye on? Who do you, th you think is going to land over there? I have no clue. I have no clue. I'm going to say maybe – if Danny Granger does get cut, I'm going to say Granger. Well, how, do you th how do you think – let's go back to the Pacers then real quick. How do you think uh, Bynum's going to fit over there? I think he's a good fit off the bench as long as he doesn't have a horrible attitude problem. I'm going to say he's going to be a nice fit. And I think him going to a winner where it's, it's a quiet city, it's not somewhere where he's going to go and complain about this and complain about I, I I think he'll be okay. I, I, I do. I, I'm not saying he, I'm not 100% sure of that. Am I willing to take a bet on that? No, because – more times than not, Bynum has problems. With the Lakers, he had problems. With the Sixers, he had problems. With the Cavs, he had problems. I, I mean, he just he's never loved the game of basketball, which has always been his issue. But maybe he'll be motivated in Indiana. I, I mean, I'd like to see I'd like to see him do well in Indiana. I mean, he's never going to get that big contract ever again. He, he'll never get anything big. He blew that one with the Cavs. So let's see where it takes him from here. But I think Indiana is loaded going this. And Bynum is a rim protector who will help against Greg Oden in the playoffs. It'll be funny to see this. They're the two functioning knees between the two of them. Yeah, the creaky knee crew. Yeah, that'll be, that'll be interesting. Well, let, let, what what about some of the other teams? I, obviously, you know, Spencer Hawes, the one I was following with the Cavs, and, uh, you know, the, the Granger deal with Evan Turner, Pacers and Sixers, that was the huge one. What else happened, and how does it help their teams? Any other trades of note or trades that didn't happen? There was nothing really else significant that really happened in the NBA and the shakeups. I mean, Sacramento made a couple of deals, but Sacramento, Sacramento. Yeah. There's no, there's nothing significant. Uh, you know, the Hawks wound up with Antoine Jameson. I mean, ooh, big trade there. <laughs> how how many teams has Jameson played on in his 20-year career? Has he played for every played, team? Jameson has played for the Warriors now. He's played for... Good luck thinking of all of them. I'm going to have to pull up his Let player card. Did he play for the – no, he played for the Warriors, the Lakers, the Cavaliers, the Wizards. He hasn't been on that many teams. I'm trying to think who else he's been on. Um, he was on the Clippers this year. The Wizards. I think the Hawks will cut him. 
Yeah, I already said the Wizards. Uh, he's on the Wizards the majority of his career. I feel like he's hang on. I'm he was gonna... drafted by the Raptors and traded for Vince Carter. Okay, from Golden well, I mean, State, it, from Golden State to Dallas, Wizards, Cavs, yeah. Lakers, Clippers, Hawks. It seems like he's been on more than that. I mean, he was drafted by the Raptors, traded on draft day for Vince Carter. Ah, oh, okay, well. I mean, but both of I mean, that was, it was, I mean, Vince Carter was a great player in his heyday, but Antoine Jameson was a, you know, Antoine Jameson was a three-time All-Star for a reason. What was that? The Cavs had three or four first, number one overall picks on their team at the same time. It was Jameson, LeBron James, uh, Jameson Shaquille wasn't O'Neal. the number one overall pick. It was, it was, what's his name? Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, oh, Joe Smith. Was it Joe Smith? There we Joe are. Smith. LeBron, uh, who else? Shaq. Joe Smith, Le- and who? Shaq. Who? Shaquille O'Neal. Oh, Shaquille O'Neal, yeah. Otherwise known as Shaq. Yeah, um, okay, anyway, we're, we're digressing, because obviously Anton Jameson is at the twilight stage of his career. So, all right, the trades are done. Westbrook is coming back. Let's talk about teams getting healthy, who you see making a strong push, who you see, who you see fading. W- what should we be paying attention to now, Zach, as we kind of wrap up this part of the season post-All-Star uh, weekend in the NBA? Well, I mean, like I said, I think you have teams that are coming along. I'm not saying they're there yet, but I don't think the Cavaliers are going to make an impact in the playoffs. But it's nice to see them coming along, coming out of their shell in the East. They look like a totally different basketball team, like I said. Yeah, let's hope it continues. Some, some, something got into them where they look like a much better basketball team than they have all season. They look like a real team. And they're, they're beating a good Toronto team right now, too. They just have to be able to keep it up because they've blown so many leads in the third and fourth quarter this year, especially against the other night or against Orlando, blowing a 21-point lead and almost losing that game. That's right, yeah. But, I mean, you're up by seven right now against a, a, a team, a Toronto team that's been lighting it up since Rudy Gay was traded. Yeah, go figure. Addition by subtraction, they say. Um, but, I mean, Rudy Gay, he's had his time. What about the West, though? We've, we've spent a lot of this time talking about the East. Obviously, you know, we, we glossed over Durant. Is Durant the MVP, or does that go to LeBron again? It's Durant or LeBron. I think it's a toss-up at this point. But, I mean... Who wins in the politics I mean, of that? Do they give it to the new kid? Do they give it to the reigning king? Oh, well, it's up to the voters at this point. I mean, I'm just glad I don't have a vote because I really don't know who I would choose. If it were me, I'd probably be playing the safe card and go with LeBron because I think he deserves it. But I think I think also Durant's really carried OKC without Westbrook this season. So Durant Durant deserves a bit of it too. I mean, I I, I think go either way. I mean, I'd rather just pick a name out of a hat and say this is who I'm voting for. <laughs> out of a wait, I, between the two of them, or out of everybody in the NBA? No, yes, because I really think Earl <laughs> Clark is the MVP. <laughs> so I meant the two of them. Or how about Semi or Den, the slug? Is he still even in the league? He's not even in the league. Ah, well. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, out of just flip a coin or pick names out of a hat. Um, the Spurs always surprise us, though. Are we? Are we gonna get? A championship oh, they're, they're caliber making a performance. Quiet run. The, the, I'm surprised they didn't do anything at the deadline. I really am. I thought they would make one small move at the deadline. They always seem to be players, quiet players, every every year, and they suddenly they always come along and they get in the playoffs. They just don't. They just don't get a ton of exposure, and they're always a fantastic team. They'll be there towards the end. But I, I like the Clippers. I, I really like the Clippers this year. I, I, I like their balance on offense. I think Chris Paul is just taking his game to another level. I really like the Thunder. I think Golden State's definitely underachieving this year. I think they should have moved Harrison Barnes if they could have gotten something for him because he really just – Barnes is not he, – he doesn't like coming off the bench, and he, he really hasn't been very good at all. He's, he's been below average, to say the least. So I would have moved Harrison Barnes or something, but they weren't able to do that. I think I don't think the – but, you know, whenever you've got Steph Curry and Clay Thompson, if they're on draining threes, they're pretty tough to beat. Okay, so, so let, let's call it. Who comes out of the West? Is it the Clippers? Is it the Spurs? Is it? I'm, go with, I'm going with the Thunder this year. Okay. I think they've turned the page. And so then it's Thunder versus who? I'm going to... It's all right. Why are you making me choose? Because I, I am a radio talk show host, and I like to put you in the, uh-huh. in the hot seat. I have to, I'm going to go with the Miami Heat. Oh, you're choosing the Heat. Interesting. After all the moves... 
that the Pacers have made still go in heat. You like the safe bet, though, like you said in the MVP vote. Voting LeBron and picking the heat. That's fair. I mean, it's a, it's a strong bet. Then who wins out of Thunder versus Heat? Um, Best I'm of gonna seven. All right. All right. No, that's fair. Who's Rookie of the Year this year? How about that? Rookie of the Year. Victor Oladipo. Hands or down. Or Tim Hardaway, but I, I like Oladipo. Okay. Oladipo, Rookie of the Year. Who's most improved? Most improved player? Oof. There's a couple guys in that category. I think you can go with Reggie Jackson from Oklahoma City. I mean, from OKC. Um... Ooh, there's. I mean, there's a lot of names this year. I mean, Jared Solinger. I, I mean, I think there's a lot of names that could be thrown in that. Coach of the year. Who's well, it's doing? Not the... Mike Brown. <laughs> <laughs> what if the Cavs never lose the rest of the year? Would you change your mind on that? If they went on a full second half. Yeah, if they, yeah, if they win the rest of the games, Mike Brown will win Coach of the Year. Okay, okay, you uh, heard it here it's first. It's not going to be Mike D'Antoni. I think Doc Rivers has a chance to win it. I think. Polster again has a chance. I think Frank Vogel in Indiana could win it. And I, I think that Scott Brooks is a major candidate too. Okay. So what am I leaving out? We got the NBA champion, rookie of the year, most improved head coach. Who, who, what I forget as far as trophies? Most awesome hairdo? Coolest sneaker line? Uh, we're going to go something other than Chris Anderson. <laughs> Joachim Noah in, in, his, in his bun? Maybe is that hairdo of the year? No, just reading now, apparently, that uh, Warner Brothers is coming out with Space Jam 2 starring LeBron James. Breaking news? Yes, they are. Yeah, Space Jam 2 with, starring LeBron James. They've begun working on a Space Jam sequel. Uh, what, what about Kazam 2? Uh, I maybe the next Shaquille O'Neal. I have no clue who will be in that one. <laughs> Space Jam too. Let me. All right. Well, then, as we wrap it up here, let me just ask you about this other ridiculous story. Did well, ridiculous. Did you hear the report that the Browns were trying to trade for Jim Harbaugh, the 49ers head coach? I have heard that today. I have heard that. Yeah, it's just popping out there. I mean, it, it's it's very rare that a head coach is traded, but apparently the Browns were trying to do it. Any any. Knee jerk reaction thoughts on on hearing that one? Um, not really because it didn't happen. But I mean, wow! I I could have imagined. Like I said, if, if I were the Browns, I wonder what they would have given up. Maybe the whole draft except the number four pick, and then you go in there and you find your coach and your quarterback, and suddenly you're done. Interesting, interesting take. It's worth that much, maybe, just to get it built with a good foundation. And the two high-ranking 49 er sources are saying that, that that's completely false and ridiculous. Yeah, but of course they're going to say that. Of course they're going to say that. Exactly. I just don't get why pro football talk would make that up. So obviously there was some there, there was something that went on there which obviously caused me to say this pro football talk is always on point. They're a legitimate source of information. Speaking of legitimate source of information, tell us again. You said you go to a player card and you type something afterward. So are you just, saying... Just type in, just type in anybody... A player name. Type in Anthony Bennett, Pro B-Ball Ref. Pro... Pro Basketball or Pro B-Ball Ref. Pro B-Ball Ref. Yeah. Hang on. I... You know, come to his Pro Basketball Reference page. Okay, so are you okay? I'm gonna try this right now. So you're saying in my in my web browser, what do I t I type in the player's name and then do just slash? Just go to Google. Type in Anthony Bennett. Pro is one word, and then the next one B ball, and then ref R E F, or Pro Basketball Reference, whatever is easiest for you. Located Anthony. Be this is instant checkmate. We found Anthony Bennett. Okay, BasketballReference.com. Okay, it's Basketball-Reference.com. That's what I'm. Yes. Oh, okay, basketball. Oh, okay. And then this gives you all of the... Ah. Oh, interesting. I'm going to have to play around with this. And I know I know a lot of our NBA fans, if they're not already using this, I guess they should definitely check it out. Basketball-reference.com. Interesting. Okay, cool. Well, I'm going to check that out. Thank you for the heads up on that. Anytime. But, of course, I'm going to be bringing you in to give me the, the, the breakdown. I'm going to say, Zach. I was, I've been using it for years. It's great. Zach, I was too lazy to look that thing up. Can you tell me about that thing again? Tell me, how how are his advanced statistics looking, Zach? I was too lazy to look it up. That That's what I'm going to do. My job is to bring okay. you in as the expert. So, 
This week, you're in. Uh, next week, you're in San Francisco, eh? That's I will be there. Yeah, I've got. I'm in San Jose Wednesday and Thursday, and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I will be in San Francisco. Very interesting. Well, welcome back to the Golden State. So, if by any chance, sun. if you happen to be up there, let me know. Oh, of course. I. I. W- I of course. It's only what a seven-hour drive, anyway. You know, no biggie. Yep. No biggie. Well, hey, man. Thank you very much for joining us again. I, I really wanted to kind of get your thoughts on, on the Cavs winning streak and if I'm allowed to be happy that the Cavs are winning. And you gave me that assurance. You said, yes, you're allowed to cheer for the Cavs again. And that feels good because yeah. I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing for a while. So thank you for joining us. And Thank you. Make sure everybody out there listening that if you are not following Zach on Twitter, he's at ZBarris at Z-B-A-R-I-S. Well, I'll let you get going. Enjoy your dinner. Hopefully have a good happy hour beverage. And we'll be talking again soon, Zach. You have a great weekend, sir. See you next weekend. All right, take care. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Later. There he goes, everybody. And it really is like clockwork. See you next weekend. That's not see. It's hear ya. But I hear ya. Hey, NBA is a hell of a place to... It's, It's a lot of fun. It's 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 a great sport. It's nice when your favorite team is performing solidly. I got to see him up close. Oh, I didn't talk with Zach about Luol Deng. Ah, uh, <laughs> dang it. <laughs> uh, that, you know, I I didn't even write that down as a note. That's why I didn't bring it up. Dang. Ah, got distracted on something else. Thanks. I'm curious. I mean, Dang's contract is up. They're trying to get some value for him. They obviously didn't pull the trigger on the trade. But he, he was a hell of a player I went, at that Laker Cavs game. I went to go see him. Dang was rocking it. So I don't know. I don't know if it's just, you know, it, it'd be nice to get assets back. But whatever. Ride it out. Keep your player. Try to add the big dog next offseason. See what happens. Go Cavs. All right. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to kind of hit reset here. We're going to recalibrate, and we're going to come back on the other side with our Agree to Disagree program, covering the craziest stories in the week of news that you may have missed. I'm going to bring in radio host Blake the Eccentric Wally, and we're going to be back on the other side. You're listening to Metro by Twist of Nothing, by the way, with all that great drumming by Johnny Rab, special collaborator on this tune. So yeah, please make sure if, if, if you like hearing about the NBA stuff and just funny stuff and good sports tweets in general, please make sure you check it out. Uh, Zach Barris on Twitter. It's at Z Barris. That's Z-B-A-R-I-S. My name is Brian Engelman. You've been listening to the Unhappy Hour program. Real, real important. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for all of you who have got us over 200,000 video views on YouTube.com slash The New American Media. We want more. So please click subscribe, share the content with your friends, embed it on your own site. That's awesome. Go on Facebook and search The New American Media with spaces in between and like the page. On Twitter, we're at American underscore media underscore follow us. And check out our homepage, thenewamericanmedia.com. Signing out for everybody here at the TNAM Radio Network. We're going to play a song in between here and then we're going to be back on the other side talking about... What is that? Does the FCC really want people in the newsrooms monitoring free speech? What's going on in Venezuela, in Kiev? I think we're going to find out, folks. Coming up. You are listening to the New American Media.